there was this surgeon who came up to me and told me that if you do the surgeries, you have a 50% chance of survival. But if you don't do, you have a 100% chance of dying. I was doing my part-time university degree then. While I was having my lessons, I'm not able to see the lecture properly. I'm not able to see my notes properly. There's something wrong. It's so unusual. I'm seeing like white flashes. So I went to SGH a &E myself to get it checked out. Even though the room was very cold, I was sweating and shivering at the same time. They found out that what I had was this thing called idiopathic intracranial hypertension. It was a neurological condition and it's nothing to do with the eyes. There's a ton of medical conditions that are idiopathic. It means the medical community still haven't figured out the root cause. Our brain produces this thing called the CSF, Cerebral Spinal Fluid. There was an old production of this fluid in my brain and the excess fluid went on to lodge onto my optic nerve and it damaged my optic nerves. I immediately called my family and I was like crying. How would you even break such a news to your family or your close ones, right? At the time, I was still able to see a little bit. So with that limited amount of vision, I wrote a very long message to a number of my close friends. I just wanted them to know that if I die due to complications, that message was coming from me and I wanted them to have some form of closure. I was hospitalized for about three and a half months and the lowest point was towards the period where I was supposed to get discharged. You know, let's say even if I have one more year of surgeries to do, right, maybe that wouldn't have been my lowest point because I know there is still some form of salvation. Imagine you roll up the piece of paper slightly, slightly. The diameter becomes narrower and narrower. Eventually, it becomes so narrow, you will just be able to see like a spot of light. This was how it was towards the end of my surgeries. I lost 100% of my sight within a very short span of uh, three months. When I woke up, right, it wasn't pitch black. So yeah, this is actually a common misconception. It's uh, different colors for different people, actually. It was a very painful moment, those couple of hours, to let the reality sink in, you know? You're blind, you can't see anymore. Prior to me losing my sight, my job was everything. Being in the creative and media industry, right? It was a very visual job I had. I was constantly flying around and I really looked forward to Mondays, you know, I love my job that much. Things came crashing down and I had to reroute my life in a different direction. It took me like a year to get out of my depression and I wanted to find employment. This part was very difficult for me. They don't really want to see my capabilities or what I can provide for them or the value I can add to this company or to the role. The moment they know that I'm blind, they immediately want to shut me off. Learning how to use a phone was quite easy, I would say, because it's fully like touchscreen. But when it came to the computer, it was very difficult. So blind people, when we use the computer, we don't use the mouse. And there are more than like 2,000 over commands. So that's one thing that you have to actually learn first, like the layout of the keyboard, where the function keys are and all that. But it was very, very overwhelming for me. And uh, I definitely cannot remember all of that. My friends got me a Google Home. Every day I wake up uh, in my room and I will just say, um, is there optic nerve transplant? And it will always tell me no. I always tell this to my friends. Um, I don't think I will die as a fully blind man. <laughs>